Hey, what's going on AP World people? We have the first of many videos outlining the curriculum for you. This one is on topic 1.1 and everything you need to know about East Asia and particularly the Song Dynasty in AP World. If you want to download the PowerPoint or fill in the blanks handout for this, please visit the link in the description and it is there for you to download. All right, let's start off talking about Unit 1, Topic 1, Developments in East Asia from 1200 to 1450. Those years are very important as this is the first unit in world. So this topic is going to focus on the Song Dynasty, which was from 960 to 1279 CE. And in particular, we're going to focus on the following aspects of the Song Dynasty. Number one, Confucianism. Two, Imperial Bureaucracy. And these two together will be used to justify their rule. The Song Dynasty will use this to justify their rule in China. Buddhism and labor as well. So let's start off with some background on the Song Dynasty. Well, the first emperor was Song Taizu, pictured here. He consolidated his power throughout China, or really grew his power throughout China, and he expanded bureaucracy. And bureaucracy means government officials. Please know what that definition means if you don't. It is very important. You will not see government officials. You will often see the term bureaucracy instead. And education was based on Confucianism, and people could take civil service exams for government jobs. So government and Confucianism was linked heavily. So aspects of life of China under the Song Dynasty included new agricultural techniques were developed, such as iron plows and irrigation to produce more food. There was a rapid increase of population as a result of this increased food. And we have an urbanized society. China was the most urbanized society in the world. The city located over here of Hangzhou was a capital with more than 1 million people. That is an enormous amount of people for the time period we're talking about. It is a patriarchal society in which males dominated. And there was ancestor veneration as well, where people would revere their ancestors and worship their ancestors. Foot binding did occur, and this was mostly practiced by wealthy families, as this was a sign of social status. And this is an example of a patriarchy society in which young girls would have their feet binded and bones broken and often would have to be carried from place to place, and women would be subservient to men in this patriarchal society with foot binding. Gunpowder is used during this time, and printing becomes popular in China during this time, as does paper money and porcelain, which will be used for a lot of trade. All right, let's jump over to Confucianism. This stressed social harmony and traditions. And a famous quote is, good government consists in the ruler being a ruler, the minister being a minister, the father being a father, and the son being a son. So everybody has a place in Confucian society. Respect for elders and reverence for ancestors plays a large role, as does filial piety. And please star, circle, underline, highlight this bad boy. This is where the family members give deference or defer to the male head of the family. So again, this is an example of patriarchy in China during this time. Now, imperial bureaucracy. The amount of government workers during the Song Dynasty increased tremendously, and this caused the government to raise taxes, which will lead to resistance from poorer peasants that did not want to pay taxes. Now, let's jump over to China's influence on neighboring regions, as it has a lot of influence. We're going to start with Korea under the Silla Kingdom. And Chinese influence dates back to the Song Dynasty, and Korea would kowtow to China and send tribune. Kowtowing is this ritual of bowing where one's head would actually touch the floor as they're bowing to China to recognize that they are subservient to China and China is more powerful. And they would also send tribute in the form of money and or goods. Trade increased with Korea and China during this time. And Korea modeled their government after China. So China is going to have a very large influence on Korea. And we'll compare that with their influence on neighboring Vietnam. In Vietnam, we have elite study Confucianism and took similar civil service examinations that they took in China. Many Vietnamese kept their own religions. However, Buddhism did spread to Vietnam. And we'll talk more about Buddhism in just a minute. Now, finally, the last area we're going to focus on Chinese influence is Japan, and they will adopt many aspects of Chinese government. However, if you look at this map here, we'll notice that Japan is more isolated from 
China due to water, whereas Vietnam and Korea are connected by land with China, Japan has water, so they're not going to be as connected to China. There is also a government bureaucracy in Japan, and they supported Confucianism and Buddhism. And the new capital of Japan was modeled after Chang'an, a very important city in China. So Buddhism in China appealed to many Chinese. The ideas of morality, intellectual sophistication, and salvation was a major appeal to Chinese people. Mahayana Buddhism, in which we see bodhisattvas, were people that delayed nirvana to help others. So these were people who were very close to achieving nirvana. However, they actually delayed this to stay on earth and help people out. Monastic communities developed in China, and when we're talking about monastic community, these are people that live in communities devoted to a monastic or religious life. You see it in Christianity with nuns as well. And Neo-Confucianism will develop, which is a combination of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. And we have Zhu Xi, who is a Neo-Confucian scholar. And Neo-Confucianism will also influence Vietnam, Korea, and China. Jumping over to labor and Song China, free peasant labor, merchants, and artisan labor helped the Chinese economy flourish. Peasants grew rice, wheat, and millet. And fast ripening rice from Vietnam allowed rice to be grown twice per year, which led to more food and more production. So we see a positive connection between China and Vietnam for the Chinese in which this introduction of fast ripening rice allowed for increased food production, which fed more people, which led to an increase in population in China. And trade will increase throughout Eurasia via the Silk Roads. We'll talk about this more in a couple videos, but we're going to see China drastically increase trade throughout Eurasia due to the Silk Roads. All right, well, I'm with a quick recap. We have characteristics of Song China you should be familiar with. Impact of Confucianism on China. Increased imperial bureaucracy. China's influence on Vietnam, Korea, and Japan. And the impact of Buddhism in China. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you back here for topic 1.2, developments in Dar al-Islam from 1200 to 1450. We'll be talking about Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Thanks for watching. Best of luck. And we'll see you back for more videos. Have a good day.